Hello again, this is Kate Brown Pernia for Why Not a Hat. Today we're going to talk vintage. When I was teaching millinery at Houston Community College in their fashion program years ago, I used to tell my students that I learned half of what I know about millinery at FIT in their millinery program, and the other half I learned by studying old hats, sometimes taking them apart, or sometimes just taking a lot of measurements and trying to figure them out. So today, I want to talk to you about this sweet little number here. Right before the pandemic, I was working on a number of um, hat classes and other projects, but the, one of the most interesting ones was I was curating a hat exhibit for the Arlington County Cultural Affairs Office. They have a costume lab that's been in business for 40 years, and they have quite a hat collection. What we wanted to do was to have a display in the Cultural Affairs Office of the various interesting hats in their collection. So, so to show the history of hats and how they're made and just things that people have forgotten about in the 50 years that hats have been in decline in this country. So anyway, I brought a couple of those hats home to steam and brush up and try to get cleaned up right when the pandemic happened and everything got closed down. So I ended up hanging on to three of the hats. Uh, I will return them when they reopen. But this one I thought was particularly interesting. This is a sweet little number. I'm going to hold it up so you can get a better look at it. It's all folded and it's made of file, which is a ribbed fabric similar to grow grain ribbon. I don't know if you can see. Anyway, I thought this was quite intriguing and I, I, I couldn't really figure out how it worked. So what I did, I'll tell you a little secret. I took out one stitch right here on the top of the hat. And when I took out that one stitch, I discovered that the hat was nothing but an oblong, rather like this, that was just folded into an intriguing shape. So I set about taking some measurements and reconstructing the hat in my head size. This is a vintage piece. It's quite small. It's uh, 11 inches across the top and I have a large head so I started with a 12 inch across the top. But let me show you how the hat is made. It's really kind of fun. I'm going to set this lady aside, try to get the camera to show on my table. And you see? Now this is the one that I made the other day. It's folded up here, folded here with a little button on the corner. And I added this trim to the outside edge, but I'm not sure that I like the trim. I think in a way it takes away from the folds, but you let me know what you think. Some of my friends think they trim adds something to the hat. It's a, it's a dilemma. But we're going to make another one today so I can show you how the folds are done. It's really kind of interesting. Where's my measuring tape now? Oh dear, I've lost my measuring tape. Here it is. The first fold is done on the right-hand side of the hat up here in the right-hand corner. And what I did was I measured, let me adjust this better. I measured six inches from the corner and I put a pin at the six inch mark and then I measured two inches from the corner and put another mark. Now, the way this works is you open up the hat. I'm trying to flatten the seam allowance on the inside of the hat. I'm going to fold it over where that first pin is at the two inch mark and match it up to the pin at the six inch mark. And then I'm going to pin it together and take a couple, just a couple of stitches, that stitch that I took out before. Here, I have a needle all threaded. So I go through the hat and through the fold
I'm going to make a square knot, which is, as you recall, is right over left, left over right. And the thread I'm using is something called silamide, which you can order online. Um, you could use buttonhole twists, just as long as you use a strong thread, because this stitch is what's kind of holding the style together. Okay, now I can take out that pin. Just take a couple of stitches to make sure it's secure. Need my bot, my uh, thimble here. And then I'm going to square knot it again. Right over left, left over right. One, one more stitch, go through the loop there that's made, just to knot it off finally. Oopsie. I can just run the thread through. Don't need the needle for that. I'm always doing that, pulling my thread out of my needle. Isn't that annoying when that happens? Then I'm just going to poke it down into the hat to lose it on the inside and clip it off. Now you'll notice that this this fabric shreds a little bit, so I'm going to put some uh, millinery grow green on the inside to hide that shredding and to keep it from falling apart. So, clip off this little tail here. Now we have the first fold. Interesting, hey? Now I'm going to go over to my steam iron and just steam the little fold there to hold that in place. I'll be right back. Now we want to get the other fold, which is on the other side of the hat. And the way this is done, we measure up two and a half inches from the hemmed edge. These are all measurements I got off of the original hat. And then at one and a half inch, that's where we're going to. Now I'm going to fold it up on that two and a half inch mark. And pin it. And then measure one and a half inches from the hem of the hat, which is where we're going to stitch it. Right here. I'm going to use another thread because that one I think is too short. So just take a few stitches here. Then I can get rid of those pins. Self tangled up there. Knot it off. And then we're going to take this fold and fold it up inside the hat. So up 
like this, and then bring the rest down, and there you have the second interesting little fold. You see how that works? Then I'll iron that as well, and then, let's pull off that stray thread. I found these wonderful little jet buttons in my stash, so I'm going to sew them on about an inch in on both sides. I'm just going to pin it right now rather than make you watch me sew a button on. But that's how you get that wonderful little shape of a hat. Now the possibilities are kind of interesting, don't you think? Let me pull this up a little bit. I'll show you some other ones I've worked on this week. Here's a finished one that I made. Now it's not my best style because I have a narrow face, but I thought it would be interesting to add this little trim on here. I'm not sure I like it. I think in a way the straight line of the trim takes away from the curvy lines of the folds. But you tell me what you think. There's a couple of other possibilities here. I thought it would be fun to make one in an African fabric. My friend Nancy suggested that and I thought it was a great idea. So I found this wonderful cotton fabric from Ghana and when I made this one, I discovered that none of the buttons I had would show off on this hat. But in the middle of the night, I had a little brainstorm. I had these little felt balls, wool felt balls that I found at Michael's. So I uh, decided to replace the button with the felt ball. And I think it works because there's a little bit of orange behind some of the dots uh, in the fabric. Kind of a fun hat, don't you think? And I've got one more here. This one's really wacky. This is just a home deck cotton striped fabric, but it's a lot of fun. And see, this is what I think is fun about studying vintage hats. Back in the day when this hat was worn, people were more formal and they dressed up. And that's what this hat, which is made out of file, is a dressier hat. But something like this, you could wear with a jeans jacket and it would look fabulous, don't you think? So why not a hat?